So for this next project, we're actually going to be talking and working with sets, sets of ceramics. So I'm just going to show an example piece. This was something I made in China. So here's my plate, pretty simple. And then I have my cup, also simple. And then my little coffee cup, tea cup, pretty simple. And then my bowl, which was also very simple. So do you guys see what the one connecting point in all of these are? They all are made out of porcelain and they have these little black squiggles. So that's kind of how these are all a set. They're all made out of the same clay, they're all glazed in the same way, and they all have one connecting attribute. So that's going to be our project. We'll look at more images on where we're going to get our designs from, but I just wanted to show that as a quick example on what we're making. All right. So. As always, we're going to start with clay. So I'm going to go ahead and wedge this clay. And that's anytime there's air bubbles, you're reusing clay. You just kind of want to wedge, wedge any air bubbles out. I'm just doing kind of this like simple hand motion where I'm pushing it down, rolling it back up, pushing it down, rolling it back up, kind of over and over again. And then once it gets kind of long, I change it and then press it down again. So now I have my piece of clay, I'm going to kind of pound it into a potato. So I'm going to go ahead and demo, I'll do a bowl first, I'll demo the bowl first. So we're going to do this pinch pot style. So if you guys remember when we were doing our clay four project, we did the pinch in the middle. And then I'm just really, I'm pinching my bowl out very slowly. So at this point, my walls are still super, super thick, but I have a little bit of a bowl shape going on right now, but it's really heavy. So I'm gonna keep working it out. Once you get to this point, if it's easier to start working it out while it's sitting on the table, that's fine. And just kind of keep turning it, pinching those walls up. Before you know it, your bowl is just gonna start growing. And this might take some time. If it fails the first time, that's okay. Just re-wedge it back together and start again. It might take some time just to feel that clay in your fingers and kind of how to push it out and where to push it out. But essentially, this is kind of what you'll come up with is this little bowl. Now, this is where aesthetic comes into play. You guys get to decide. Do I like that pinched, that pinched look? It's kind of like old school, primitive. I think it's really beautiful. If you guys like that pinched look, you can leave all, all those finger marks in there just the way it is. And maybe that's a style thing. Maybe all of your pieces are made like that with a pinched look. Or maybe you're like, no, I really like things to be like super clean, super smooth. Then you can get your, your rib, your rubber rib, and you can start to go in, smooth things out, make them nice and pretty and smooth. You'll probably have to smooth out multiple angles, multiple ways. And that's just going to take some time to do. So if you're going to smooth it out, it's going to look more like that side. If you guys want to leave that fingerprint and sort of your personal touch on it, it's going to look more like that. But remember, you'll get to put glaze on it and it'll come out colorful and fun. So there you go. That's a bowl, pinched bowl. All right, so the next thing I'm going to demo is a plate. We're going to do the same thing as the pinched pot, but we're going to make a plate. So I've wedged my piece, again, I'm just pushing down, kind of rolling up, pushing down. If you get clay straight from the bag, you don't need to do this. This is just for that clay that, you know, maybe it's leftover clay from your bowl or something. All right, so I'm pounding this out again. This clay is a little bit firmer than the last clay. Okay, and once I get this into like a perfect little soft ball, And I'm just going to kind of start pounding it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is start pounding it down. And it's getting pressed more into like a hockey puck shape. And then from the center, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pinch it out. But I'm not actually creating a hole in the middle. I'm just slowly pinching out all around. And 
it's gonna look real weird and real bumpy and you just have to trust me <laughs> that it's gonna look okay in the end. So you really wanna keep turning your piece as you're pressing out because if you only press out in one corner, it's gonna turn into a triangle. And so you wanna keep that circle-ish shape. If you wanna do one that's more square, maybe you wanna make all of your things more square, that's okay, that's where it kinda, it's your train of thought, your creativity. All right, so once I'm starting to get closer to my edge of pinching out, always remember that plates have a little bit of a lip at the edge. So I'm gonna make sure I leave a good chunk of clay right here so that I can actually fold the clay up and create a clay lip. So keep that in mind as you're pinching your stuff out. Okay. So now I'm in that same predicament as my bowl where my bottom is kind of bumpy and has that fingerprint texture. Same thing, if you like it, leave it. I think it's really cool. I also really like smooth things, so it's sort of your, your decision. So I'm gonna get my rubber rib and I'm gonna start smoothing that bottom out. Pretty slowly, I'm not gonna push too hard. And it's just gonna kinda smooth it out a little bit. All right, so now I have my smooth bottom. I'll show you guys my smooth bottom. And now I need to smooth out my edges. So I'm gonna go in and just kind of use my fingers to pinch. And then I'm gonna rub out those edges. I really, really encourage you guys to be creative. This is really where you can take creative initiative if you wanna use your pin tool and kind of like literally make the entire edge straight. If you wanna go in and carve out a design with your lip, this is where you get to take control of the project. I'm just showing you how to make the base, how to make the starting point, and then you get to insert all of your creativity into it. The end goal is that you have a set of ceramics that are functional for you to use in your style that you like. All right, so now we're gonna demo the coffee cup and the regular water cup. I'm only gonna make one because essentially the only difference between the two is one has a handle and one doesn't. I'm gonna demo the regular water cup first and then we'll talk about how to add a handle. So that will be for both of your cups. Okay. So as always, we're gonna start with our clay. You really don't need a huge piece of clay for making a cup. So I'm just gonna start with a little slab. Now I cut this one from the bag, so I do not need to wedge it. I'm gonna actually cut this again, because I have too much clay. And then I'm going to pound this back into a potato. Similar to how we started the bowl, we're going to make this one pinch pot style, except we're going to be focusing more on lifting the clay up instead of lifting it out. Okay, so I'm actually really going to try to start with like a potato shape and make sure that it's sitting up vertically since we want our cup to kind of be lifted. So I'm going to start with it like this and actually enter my fingers this way. And I just got a pretty deep hole in there. But now I have my basic shape started. Now the goal is not to push out, it's just to push up with these outer fingers. And again, this is one that might take you a few times, you might re-wedge it and have to restart but just slowly getting a feel for it. I'm just pull, like pulling that clay up with my out, out, outer fingers. As always, make sure you have a, a base, a flat base for your cup to sit on so it's not tipping over. Okay, so I just wanna show you guys the difference between the bowl and the cup. So see how the bowl really is like open and the cup is taller and shorter. Actually not shorter, it's just taller and tinier. So make sure you have that difference. If you end up with a bowl the second time, that's okay, just rewedge it, start over. It's no big deal. We're working the whole week on this project, so just take your time, really make these worth it. Remember, you guys get to use these at the end. They're your masterpieces. All right, so I'm just really making sure all my walls are nice and thin. And once again, if you wanna smooth it out, grab your rubber rib, come on over here. I'm bracing the inside of my cup with my hand as I'm 
pressing on the outside. The cup is probably going to be the easiest one to smooth out just because it's fairly tall and straight. It's not a bowl where you have to like kind of go outwards with it. Okay, yeah, that's smoothing up real nice. I'm dipping my, my rubber rib in water just to keep this basically slimy and keep working up and down the clay. All right, as with all cups, the one special thing about a cup versus any other, any other type of dinnerware is that you're actually coming in contact with that lip. You're actually sipping right here. So you really want to make this accessible to people. You want it to be really soft. You don't want it to be bumpy. So this is the one that you really have to actually go in and make sure this is a smooth, straight top. So you can just come in with your pin tool and kind of nip off any bumps that you have. So right here, I'm going to try to come a little bit closer to the camera. I'm just going to go in and kind of slice this top off right here. Just to try to flatten that top out. Because you imagine if you have a little dip like that and you're drinking kind of close to it, water's going to slip right out of there. So you want to kind of watch for that if you can. But it's not very hard to go around and kind of trim that top off. And then you can also always, always, always add clay where you need it. So right there, that's just a little dip. So I'm just going to have to slip and score just a little teeny tiny piece of clay right there. And I'm going to pinch that right together. That's the beauty of clay. You can do absolutely almost anything with it. Okay, so now that I've cut that edge off, it's really sharp. I want to go in and get my little pincher fingers and smooth that bad boy out. All right, once my lip is nice and smooth, I'm gonna make my handle. I'm basically just gonna pinch the handle out with that little lump of clay. You're going to dip your hand in water and you're going to just kind of pull that clay out. And it's kind of dirty and kind of slimy but it's gonna make a really pretty, nice, soft handle to hold on to. So I really recommend doing this way. And you don't need a big handle because it's kind of a tiny cup. And now that I have a handle, I'm just gonna pause. I'm gonna set it down somewhere in a handle shape and I'm just gonna leave it. I've had my handle sitting here. It's kind of firmed up a little bit. I'm gonna set it down. I'm gonna kind of cut it where I think it needs to be cut for the right size. So I'm gonna cut there, and then I'm gonna cut here. And now I have my itty bitty handle. She I'm right there. And then, you guys know this, we're gonna slip and score. And again, super important that you slip and score really, really well because you would hate for your handle to fall off while you're using it or someone else is using it. So I'm just gonna set the handle on my cup. I'm gonna make a little mark right by where I want my two handle points to, to hit. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna slip and score like crazy. Remember, get two different angles of slip and scoring. I'm gonna do it on both attaching points. And then I'm gonna press this on there. And then at this point, I'm just going to kind of wiggle it. A lot of that slip is probably going to kind of ooze out of those matching points. That's okay. Just let it happen. And you can let it dry just a little bit and then always go back in and kind of smooth it out later once it's not so goobery. But you just really want to push it in and make sure it's in there tight. One thing you never, 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 never want to do is hold your cup by your handle until it's out of the kiln for the second time in its glazeware state. So that's it. You have your cup with the handle, your bowl, and your plate. And now you officially have your own set of dinnerware that you've made. Thanks for watching, guys. Have fun.